Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. Again, I'm your host, Paul Hearing. We're here in the city of Flint, Michigan, and we are interviewing the people that are running for positions in the upcoming election. This evening, or now, I have the pleasure of speaking with Sheldon Neely. He's one of our seated councilmen here in the city of Flint, and he's running for the 34th district representative seat in Lansing. Sheldon, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you for having me, Paul. Listen, I'm going to make it real easy for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with the same question I ask everyone, and that is for you to tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Sheldon Neely, and I think people know me a little bit from my council history here. I'm ser currently serving in my third term as a Sixth Ward City Councilman. I was born and raised here in the city of Flint. I've been married uh, to my lovely, lovely wife, Cynthia, for 23 years now, and I'm the father of two wonderful daughters. Uh, I love this community, and, uh, and I have a strong faith in, in God, and that's what gives me my strength. Okay. You've been in the political scene for, for quite, a, quite a time. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to understand why. I mean, we've been devastated here with the emergency manager law. What makes you want to stay in politics? Well, you know, you give me more credit than I deserve. As far, when you say I've been in politics for a very, very long time, I'm currently serving in my, my third consecutive term, meaning I'm serving, this is my ninth year. Uh, a lot of the devastation has just really happened in our city of Flint and uh, the surrounding areas just in the last four years or so. Because when we started on council, or when I started on council, uh, we we came in under some pretty pretty decent conditions. It was just through the economic climate, uh, the housing collapse, the the world economy mm -hmm. collapsed, uh, and it just really hit us hard here in the city of Flint and also in the state of Michigan. Yeah, but then after after the economy tanked, we get our emergency manager who comes in. But that's a different story. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about you and, and your um, aspirations for the seat. Why state rep? Why not stay on the council? Why not run for mayor? Okay. Well, it's a leap of faith for me, Paul. You know, I've been on my job for 25 years now, and if I when I win, win this race uh, for the house seat, uh, I will you know forego that. I will leave that job and and try to help the people for a position that I can help. Under his current conditions that we are currently under with the emergency manager, uh, the mayor and the city council has been rendered uh, powerless uh, with this, and people are suffering right now. Uh, people are suffering in silence, and we cannot allow that to happen. And once I looked at the cast of candidates that were putting their uh, name in the hat for that position, uh, I thought, I said, well, I have to get there so we can provide some strength, some help uh, to the residents of the city of Flint. Why, I guess, why now? I mean, you're really just getting reelected on your third term. Mm -hmm. And I guess as a mandate of the people, they want you as a city councilman. We know they want you as a city councilman. Right. We right. don't know whether they want you as a state rep. Why would you give that council seat up for their state rep? Well, the thing of it is, is that, you know, we can't uh, dictate the way that, that uh, elected seats are staggered. And right now, the Woodrow Stanley uh, currently holds the seat as a 34th district representative. Mm -hmm. He's term limited, so therefore he cannot run again for that particular seat. Uh, it's just so happened that the way the seats are staggered, uh, that we have to make a decision and make a choice to go for uh, this particular position. But we know that we cannot make a mistake in uh, electing the wrong person for this position because... This, in turn, Paul, will be the highest elected position for African Americans inside the city of Flint. Uh, we have county commissioners, we have some city council people, but uh, if we lose uh, this uh, uh, this position, um, we won't have that higher elected African American to speak to that particular uh, voice for the people. Okay. So Woodrow's been term limited out, mm -hmm. and you are in a position now to to take that seat, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you finding it difficult with as many people that are in the race? Well, there, there, there are several people inside of this race. Uh, you know, it's, uh, eight Democrats is running, uh, one Republican is running. Uh, so when you have an open seat, you're going to get additional people uh, running for an open seat. You know, after uh, one, one person is elected, they usually serve throughout the tenure of term limit, which is six years for this particular seat. Wow, so that brings all sorts of questions to mind. Mm -hmm. What do you do in six years after you get the seat? But we right. won't even go there. Well, um, well, I did say it was a leap of faith for me. And, right. and, and, and being, uh, being that, 
you know, we can talk about, you know, what other skill sets that, that I possess. You know, I'm a broadcast engineer by, by profession. Uh, we can return to that, you know, but it's a leap of faith, and I'm doing this for my community. Uh, I have a deep love for this community, and that is why I'm stepping out uh, on this leap of faith, putting my, my, my personal uh, profession on pause to go for it so I can help this community. You know, many in the community know you as the ordinance king, you know, because mm -hmm. you're always pumping out the ordinances. Right. Talk right. to me about some of the things you think you'll be taking to Lansing, uh, some of the things that you'll be proposing. Uh, what can we expect from Sheldon Neely in Lansing? Well, we're understanding government. We have our specific roles that we are to fulfill inside of government. We have a check and balance, you know, co-equal branches of government in every system of government, whether it be local, whether it be state, whether it be uh, federal. Uh, a state representative is to draft legislation. That is one of the primary roles that they have, as well as watching the budget for the state of Michigan. As you called me, you, your words is called me the ordinance king. Uh, one of the roles of a city council person on a municipal level is to set public policy, positive public policy. And I've set more than any council person in Flint history. Uh, we try to set policy, and we will continue to do that, and we will fulfill that in the state of, you know, in the state of Michigan and Lansing. And when we talk about nine candidates running, not one of those other candidates besides myself has drafted any public policy for their municipality or their county. And why would you send somebody there to, the, to Lansing that, to perform on a high level that has not done those activities for you here on a local level? It seems like Lansing's ground zero. You know, it seems like you're out of the pot and into the fire. Uh, that's Snyderville. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we all know, he's not very friendly mm -hmm. to Flint and other cities similar to Flint. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on handling just the basic politics of being in a Republican-dominated uh, house? I'm not afraid to walk into a hostile room as long as I know it's hostile prior to me getting there. And we do understand that the Republican regime has taken um, issue with communities such as Flint, Pontiac, Saginaw, Detroit, and other urban centers throughout the state of Michigan. And earlier when I talked about African Americans in this position and in this particular seat, we have to have somebody to speak to those issues for these communities that has had uh, a lot of input from the state, not to a positive level. We talk about increased water rates. We talk about increased taxes. We talk about fees and service fees and lack of economic development in certain sectors of our community going down a poverty corridor uh, the North Saginaw Street where we have a lot of real estate and, and a lot of lack of attention. Uh, so we're not afraid to get down there and, and um, to Snyderville and, uh, and have a, a good direct conversation about this community and the needs of this community. And we will do that effectively once the people uh, cast a vote for me and, and I hope that they do. I hope you guys choose me for this particular seat and we will perform for you at a high level. And as you're campaigning around the city of Flint, mm -hmm. you're shaking hands and kissing babies. Mm -hmm. What are the citizens saying to you? What are they saying that they need from a representative in, in Lansing? What are they aspiring for that rep to do for them? Well, it's a high level of frustration about the lack of input and the lack of government, especially in the loss of a democracy such as we have it here inside the city of Flint. They want somebody to speak to their needs that can be heard. The state representative can be heard on that level. Local officials cannot be heard uh, from the city council seat right now, nor the mayor's office right now. So they, they're looking for their champion, and I've been uh, known to be a very good fighter for the people. As we talk about legislation and public policy around education, economic development, and safety, uh, we have done a great job on this, on this local level, and we need to take it to the next level, which is the state. Okay. Okay. I guess, uh, and I'm going to have to ask you this question because it mm -hmm. just popped in my head. Uh, nine years you've been mm -hmm. on the council. Nine mm -hmm. years you've had an opportunity mm -hmm. to make these claims to the state. Uh, have you? Or has our council kind of set in moot right. on, on, on involving maybe the president in the emergency manager situation? Or um, uh, I believe there's a lawsuit at one time from Scott Kincaid. I don't even know what the conclusion of that was. Right. Well, th those uh, litigations are ongoing currently right now, but during my tenure as a council person, I voted to fight the emergency manager when they came into the city of Flint. I'm only the current council person that's still currently sitting there that voted to fight them. Uh, we talked about the water issues. I've, I've uh, been known to be out there to be a champion for those people fighting for those water issues that we've had. Uh, I'm only one voice on the council currently right now trying to galvanize support uh, to fight these uh, very, very 
uh, challenging issues that we have inside the city of Flint. And on the state level, I think I can, you know, impact, you know, um, positive change uh, quicker than on the city council right now. Okay. So I guess I need to, to we've talked about your motivation okay. before. We've talked mm -hmm. about your experience. I've mm -hmm. called you the Ordinance King. I, I like the title, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm going to put it on a piece of literature. Don't do it, because I'll have to charge you for it. Oh, okay, okay. There are eight people mm -hmm. in this race, so eight people think they can do it better than you. Well, eight Democrats, one Republican. Uh, it's a Democratic district, so we know that a Democrat is going to come out. Okay. There's eight people that put their name forward for this position. And we have to look at the reasons why they really put their name forward for this position. Was it to just to have their name on a ballot? Because you have some people that has no elected experience at all, no government background, no training at all uh, for this position. And we have to look at that. And we have to really narrow it down. And um, absence, the friendships, the kinships, who's my friend. Uh, let's look at the body of work that each person has performed. And those people do, do, that don't have a body of work, as they paint this on using the canvas of their imagination, they're selling hope. They're telling you what they think they can do, but not knowing what they can actually accomplish uh, and not having a tested track record, uh, should, we should have questions and say, hey, maybe not now. Maybe it's not your time right now. Uh, hope is, you know, is important, but the selling of hope in this position where we need services, we need more public safety, we need lower taxes, we need a better education system for our children. Sure. Right now we need somebody with a, that's been tested and proven to be successful in those areas. Okay. All right. I'm not mad at that answer. It seems mm -hmm. uh, it seems logical, plausible, mm -hmm. and, and planable. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you just a couple minutes at the end of this, mm -hmm. this show right here to look at the camera mm -hmm. and, and talk to the audience. Convince them to vote for Sheldon Neely. That's why you're here, right? Well, well I hope I did it in this last 13 minutes to tell them <laughs> why we should do that. And I don't want to be repetitive and just saying... Uh, this is a, a self-serving move because it's not. I'm, I'm extending myself. This is a leap of faith for me and my family as I have my oldest daughter is in her third year of college at U of M. My youngest daughter is getting ready to engage college, the college experience. My wife has just recently opened a business in this community. My mother still lives here in the northern sector, sector, sections of our city. excuse me. And, and we have a lot to do and we have a lot to fight for. And I'm asking you to fight with me, to stand with me in this fight for our very existence, for our safety, and for our economic health. I'm your guy. I'm the guy that's going to be the champion for you. I've been a fighter for the people in the city council, and I want to be the fighter for the people in the state of Michigan. So I hope on August 5th that you choose me, the candidate that's going to fight for you, for, to be, for the state rep seat, the 34th district. I'm Sheldon Neely, and I thank you. Better give out a phone number, tell them where your headquarters is, give them all that goody stuff so if they want to help you oh, pass that, out literature. Well, well, that is great, Paul. You know, and I, and I know that you're going to come out and help me pass out literature because you have a great skateboard and you can move pretty good for I an can. old guy. I can. But my headquarters is located right on the corner of Chevrolet and Flushing Avenue. You can't miss it. It's a lot of Neely signs there. And if you want to help and you have the desire to help, please come on out and hear my message or come and just have a conversation or a cup of coffee with me. And we will be having locations all throughout the city of Flint where you, the resident, can come and question uh, me and ask questions of me because this race, is everybody that's engaged in this race is putting themselves up for public examination. And I encourage that because your vote is important, your vote is powerful, and it should just not be given away to a person that you may not know about. But look at my record. Look at my track record of success, and I think that I can uh, gain your vote and your trust as we move on to Lansing. Uh, the phone number that you can reach me at, you can reach me at 423-0863. Once again, that's 423-0863. Or you can listen to the radio show on WFLT 1420 every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. It's a live call-in show, unlike this one. Uh, you can call me there. And we can dialogue about some of our issues and some of our problems. And I would love to be your champion, continue to be your champion in the state of Michigan. Now, remember, I still have to edit this. I can still put a mustache on your face. You realize that, right? Well, my wife would like that because I can't <laughs> grow a mustache fully. So if you can do that, uh, yeah, all right. I, I think i look a little bit better. But, but better yet, if you can place hair anywhere, I think, anywhere. You, you, I think in that region there we can place a little more hair. But... Uh, this job has a tendency to make us lose a little bit of hair. And just, get, a little just, bit. just a little bit of hair. But, right. but Paul, you've been there, and I, and I continue to uh, thank you 
for uh, for what you do as far as putting the information out to the public because you don't get paid for this, Paul. And I know that you're there every single week, uh, day in and day out, uh, making sure the people has a, an informed uh, platform to to actually go to to take a look at what are the issues inside the city. Great. Listen, you're watching Meet the Candidates. Again, I've been your host, Paul Herring. And remember, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. Vote. We'll be back after this.